Welcome to the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency's virtual public meeting for the Keystone Corridor Groundwater Contamination Superfund Site, Operable Unit 1, Proposed Cleanup Plan. The Keystone Corridor Groundwater Contamination Superfund Site, herein referred to as the Keystone Site, is located in Indianapolis, Indiana. Given the unique circumstances of the COVID-19 outbreak, along with our commitment to protecting public health during this national emergency, EPA changed the in-person public meeting to a virtual format to avoid in-person contact. This video is published in place of a public meeting, and the presentation in this video has the same information that EPA would have shared during an in-person public meeting. However, the public comment process will be a little different. Details on how to submit a comment and have your comments addressed will be covered later on in this presentation. All site information can be found on EPA's webpage. This virtual public meeting has been convened by EPA and is being held to receive and consider comments from the public regarding the proposed plan. You may have attended a previous EPA public meeting for Operable Unit 3 covering the vapor intrusion proposed plan for the site. However, for the benefit of those who did not attend that meeting, I would like to explain why and how EPA will conduct the virtual public meeting. The virtual public meeting has three essential purposes. Number one, to explain EPA's recommended cleanup plan for contaminated groundwater at a portion of the site. Number two, to provide information on the project status. Number three, to accept and record public comments on the proposed cleanup plan. This virtual public meeting is being held in compliance with EPA's Superfund law. The transcript of this presentation is available on EPA's website at www.epa.gov forward slash superfund forward slash keystone dash corridor dash groundwater. Following this virtual public meeting, EPA will proceed with the preparation of the Record of Decision for Operable Unit 1. Your statements and comments will be addressed in this document and will be given full consideration in preparation of the final cleanup plan for Operable Unit 1. Comments will be accepted in a number of ways. You may submit a comment by using the comment form on EPA's webpage at www.epa.gov forward slash superfund forward slash keystone dash corridor dash groundwater. You may submit a written comment via email at leon.herbierto at epa.gov. You may submit a written comment by mail to US EPA Region 5, attention, Herbierto Leon, 77 West Jackson Boulevard, mail code RE-19J, Chicago, Illinois, 60604-3590, or you may leave a verbal comment by voicemail at 312-886-6662. Comments must be received or postmarked within 30 days of the virtual public meeting date, which is June 30th, 2020 to be part of the official public record. Slide five shows the Keystone Corridor site location map. The site boundary is shown in yellow and includes 45th Street to the north, 38th Street to the south, Eastern Avenue to the east, and Norwaldo Avenue to the west. The site boundary encompasses approximately 390 acres and is located in a mixed residential and industrial commercial area. Fall Creek splits the site in half. The Fall Creek Bedrock Municipal Well Field is also located within the boundaries of the site. The focus of the presentation today will be on the former Tuckman Cleaners property, which is outlined in yellow on this map, just above the yellow X. What are the risks at the site? Risks and pathways will be addressed by the cleanup and include human health risks from people ingesting or touching contaminants found in the groundwater. These contaminants include tetrachloroethene or PCE for short and trichloroethene or TCE for short. 
PCE is a non-flammable colorless liquid commonly used as a dry cleaning agent and metal degreasing solvent. TCE is a colorless volatile liquid and has two major uses, as a solvent to remove grease from metal parts and as a chemical that is used to make other chemicals, especially the hydrofluorocarbon refrigerant, HFC-134A. Both PCE and TCE are known to be harmful to people if exposed at high enough levels. In 2017, EPA began a source area investigation of the former Tuckman Cleaners property, based primarily on the results of EPA's remedial investigation at the Keystone site, which occurred from 2014 to present. During the source area investigation, EPA identified two main areas of PCE and TCE contamination. The first zone is within the unsaturated zone, which is the zone above the groundwater, between 5 and 15 feet below ground. And the second zone is within the shallow groundwater interval from 15 to 25 feet below ground. This figure shows the vertical and horizontal extent of PCE and TCE contamination within these two zones. The unsaturated zone is shown above the blue dash line and the shallow groundwater interval is labeled directly below it. The red shaded area in both zones and deeper shows residual, dense, non-aqueous phase liquid, referred to as DNAPL, or also what EPA calls free product. DNAPL or free product contains high concentrations of the contaminants. Slide eight shows the nature and extent of PCE groundwater contamination at the Keystone site. During the remedial investigation of the Keystone site, EPA identified shallow PCE groundwater contamination or groundwater plume that is approximately 4,500 feet long by 1,500 feet wide and shown by the yellow dashed lines. The maximum concentration of PCE in groundwater within the shallow plume at the former Tuckman Cleaners property is over 5,000 micrograms per liter. The intermediate PCE groundwater plume is approximately 750 feet long by 250 feet wide and shown by the red dashed lines. The maximum concentration of PCE in groundwater within the intermediate zone at the former Tuckman Cleaners property is 120 micrograms per liter. The deep PCE groundwater plume is approximately 250 feet long by 100 feet wide and shown by the purple dashed lines. The maximum concentration of PCE in groundwater within the deep zone at the former Tuckman Cleaners property is 0 0.78 micrograms per liter. These results show that PCE concentrations decrease with depth. Based on the source area investigation and high levels of PCE and TCE concentrations found at the former Tuckman Cleaners property, EPA developed and released a proposed cleanup plan to treat the groundwater underneath this property. EPA considered four different alternatives for the cleanup of the Tuckman Cleaners property, which will be discussed in later slides. EPA's preferred cleanup option is alternative two, which is discussed on this slide and called in situ thermal treatment. In situ means in place. Thermal treatment uses energy such as heat or steam, which is applied underground. This raises the temperature in the contaminated areas underground, changing VOCs, volatile organic compounds, to gases. VOC vapors are then captured in wells and treated in an above ground treatment system. This slide shows an example at another site of what an in situ thermal treatment system looks like when constructed. In the bottom left corner, the arrow is pointing to a ground cover, which in this example is asphalt. In the bottom right corner, the arrow is pointing to the pipe connections, which connect to the vapor collection wells. The middle arrow points to the vapor collection wells, which extract the vapors from the ground. And the top right corner arrow points to the vapor treatment building, where the vapors are ultimately treated before being released safely into the atmosphere. 
Slide 11 refers to what EPA calls a target treatment zone, which is shown in the green outlined area on the figure. The target treatment zone is a common element to clean up alternatives two, three, and four, which you will hear about later on in the presentation. The target treatment zone will be located under the former Tuckman Cleaners property. Based on the source area investigation, EPA determined that the horizontal or two-dimensional extent of contamination is approximately 9,000 square feet based on the outermost volatile organic compound contour line shown in purple at 1,000 micrograms per kilogram. The vertical from top to bottom extent of contamination that will need to be treated is located within two zones. In the shallow aquifer between 15 to 25 feet and below that in the upper clay between 25 to 40 feet. These two zones had the highest levels of VOC concentrations during the source area investigation. EPA is required by law to consider nine evaluation criteria, which include, number one, overall protection of human health and the environment. Number two, compliance with the applicable or relevant and appropriate requirements of federal and state laws. Number three, long-term effectiveness and permanence. Number four, reduction of toxicity, mobility, or volume through treatment. Number five, short-term effectiveness. Number six, implementability. Number seven, total estimated cost. Number eight, state acceptance. And number nine, community acceptance. Based on these criteria, EPA prefers alternative two, in situ thermal treatment because it is the fastest and most effective way to reduce the groundwater contaminant source mass under the former Tuckman property. It would take only about one year for the design, construction, operation, performance monitoring, and decommissioning of the treatment system. In situ thermal treatment has a high degree of long-term effectiveness and protection of human health and the environment over time. In situ thermal treatment is expected to significantly disrupt the current landowner's business operations for nearly a year because of the considerable subsurface and above ground infrastructure required. Although many of the components could be buried, for example, electrodes and wellheads, and the above ground elements could be located in lower visibility areas to minimize the disruption during operation. However, in situ thermal treatment has the highest certainty of effectively treating the contamination and reducing the source contamination mass. The construction time is expected to be between two and three months, and the approximate time to reach remediation goals for cleanup is one year. The total estimated cost is between three to 3.4 million. Other cleanup options that EPA considered were, alternative one, no action, which is used as a baseline for comparison to the other alternatives. Alternative three, in situ chemical reduction via injection, which consists of injecting compounds into the contaminated area to make the contaminants less hazardous or toxic. And alternative four, in situ chemical reduction via soil mixing, which involves the same elements as alternative three, but uses soil mixing instead of injection to introduce the compounds into the contaminated area. More details about all of the alternatives EPA considered are available in the proposed cleanup plan and in the administrative record found on EPA's webpage at www.epa.gov forward slash superfund forward slash keystone dash corridor dash groundwater. Next steps. We invite you to send us your comments on the proposed cleanup plan. After the comment period ends on June 30th, 2020, EPA will prepare its response to comments. Then EPA writes a final decision document called a record of decision, which will include the written response to comments. After that, the cleanup is designed under what EPA calls a remedial design document. And finally, the cleanup gets implemented. 
For more information about the proposed cleanup plan, please visit EPA's webpage at www.epa.gov forward slash superfund forward slash keystone dash corridor dash groundwater. Or you may contact me, EPA's Remedial Project Manager, Leslie Blake at blake.leslie at epa.gov. Remember, there are four ways to submit comments by June 30th, 2020. You can submit a comment by using the comment form on EPA's webpage at www.epa.gov forward slash superfund forward slash keystone dash corridor dash groundwater. You may submit a written comment by email to Eriberto Leon at leon.eriberto at epa.gov. You may submit a written comment by mail to US EPA Region 5, Attention, Heriberto Leon, 77 West Jackson Boulevard, mail code RE 19J, Chicago, Illinois, 60604 3590. Or you may leave a verbal comment by voicemail at 312 886. 6662. Comments must be received or postmarked within the 30 day public comment period, which is June 30th, 2020, to be part of the official public record. Thank you for your interest in the proposed cleanup plan for the Keystone Corridor Groundwater Contamination Superfund Site, Operable Unit 1. We look forward to your comments.